Well, here we are in my fabulous kitchen again, and I call it fabulous because you don't know how many years I made raw foods in makeshift sets and kitchens, and I even made it out in the forest once for Victoria's when we used to do our women's festival out there, and literally we didn't even have electricity. I was like using a mortar and stone to put everything together. But I've got my beautiful demo kitchen here, and raw food is don't get excited because you see an oven in the kitchen. Yes, it's an oven. It's the same oven I have in my home, but it's also a dehydrator. So the Thermador is the brand you can get is, uh, because, you know, I cook too. I don't cook for myself, but I cook for people and friends. So we need an oven also, and we will be doing cooked vegan classes here at Karen's also. We all need a bridge. I didn't go from A to Z from, you know, whatever I was eating. I even forgot. It's been so long. I've been a vegan 42 years, and a raw food is almost 30. But let's get to the food, because that's why you tuned in today. So. Uh, the book came out this year, Soak Your Nuts, and this is what we're going to do for this uh, recipe. We're going to soak our nuts, or your nuts, or the nuts, or soak nuts. So these are almonds, and almonds are the king of the nut world. Uh, people are always concerned about protein and calcium. There's more protein, more protein and calcium in this than in most of your meats and animal products, so you're going to get a nice, healthy dose. So now these we soaked. A little trick I use, you can buy ball canning jars. You can go to just about any hardware store. I put my can on these. Uh, any hardware store buy these ball canning jars and they make great sprouters and uh, storage containers for your raw foods that you're making because I do like to do things in glass. Uh, this is just nylon screen, like screen you put in your screens at home. You can get it for like 24 cents a yard at your hardware store. We go to Ace here in Chicago and you just cut out a little square, you put it on, you add a rubber band and voila! you made a soaking sprouting jar. And the beauty of this is, you really don't even, you could use the, the top to this too. Actually, I did rubber bands for so many years, but you could just use the top that comes with it also. You soak them um, probably about six hours or more. You know, I usually put mine in at night before I go to bed, and when I wake up in the morning, my nuts are soaked and ready. So, we're going to take the soaked nuts, uh, they've been soaking, we're gonna pour the water off, this is the way they looked beforehand. Ah, this is my magic hand is telling me to pick it up. <laughs> this is the way they looked beforehand. And now that we have soaked them and poured the water off, this is the way they look. The good thing about soaking nuts is when you soak your nuts, it takes a lot less to fill you up. Uh, it's a good thing. You're a lot less work on your digestive system. And the second thing that it does is um, it breaks down the enzyme inhibitors and the fats in them so they're easier to digest. Now there are some people out there who might take the time to take all of these little shells off. And if I were making nut milk, I just may, and sitting in front of a good thing of law and order, I just may sit there and take them all off too. But for the most part, I'm going to deal with the shell, you know, especially in a pate. But they would look beautiful like that and it would be very easy to pull them off after they were soaked. All right, uh, what else am I going to put in here? I'm going to put a red pepper because I like the sweetness of a red pepper. Let's get it up here. So I'm going to put a red pepper in here. And you know, I'm using a red pepper, but you could use any vegetable you have in your refrigerator. As a matter of fact, this is a great thing to do when the uh, vegetables start looking a little wilted and a little old and you don't necessarily want to serve them fresh on the plate for everybody to see what it looks like. So it's great to throw it together with some vegetables that have been kind of sitting in the refrigerator for a while. I'm going to throw a couple of tomatoes in. Let's look for one that's nice and soft already. This is such an easy recipe. Okay, these look good. I'm going to put this aside because I... And that's approximately about one cup of soaked nuts, but you know what, that's the beauty of raw foods. You don't have to have exact measurements for anything. The machine I'm using is a food processor with an S blade on it. You have different blades with your food processor. This one has the S blade. Uh, I'm not sure I need two tomatoes yet. Let's put in a clove of garlic because I love garlic. But you know what? You could use you could use cumin. You could use oregano. You could flavor this just about any way you choose. This is just a standard one I'm doing. So let's mix this up and see what we have. So it still looks kind of dry. So I think I'm going to add. 
the other tomato to it. Just to give it a little bit more moisture. <laughs> and I need to take the top out to do that. Okay. Add a little bit more tomato. And I probably... Let's check it. Let's move it around the sides. Okay, it's getting there. I probably... I'm going to push that other tomato in there a little better. Let's see how... Mm. We need some fat in here. So you could use olive oil or you could use an avocado. And I love avocados, another great source of protein. And let's just peel that skin off real quick. Because it is missing the fat. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit more avocado. You could use a little avocado. There are no exact amounts in this in a raw kitchen. So let's just that avocado in there. And that's going to give it a nice creamy effect and more of a paste. And I'm going to use a little Bragg liquid aminos or you could use your Himalayan sea salt again. Um, anything, like I said once again, any flavors that you want to add to it. that you could make ahead of time before, say, uh, you say, oh, bring a dish for an appetizer, we're having friends over, or you're going to someone's home, or, you know what, you could even just slap this on some raw crackers, or even if you're not a raw foodist yet, any kind of cracker. I suppose you could use bread if you eat bread. Uh, now let's check on our mushrooms. Oops, we were supposed to do that <laughs> Just pretend I'm telling you to do this first. You know, we just started doing these videos, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. I have some cremini mushrooms here. And the beauty of TV is I already did it. I just didn't show you how to do it. I'm going to take the cremini mushrooms that I washed. I would have done this first before making the pate. There are no mistakes in the raw kitchen. That's it. Mm -hmm. Part of my process. Just learning. No, I'm not. So I'm going to put this. This is my quick way of marinating. I take a Ziploc baggie. I'm going to take olive oil. And once again, we like the good Carruthers olive oil. And I'm going to use some of my Himalayan sea salt. And all of these products, you can get at your local health food stores or you can order them through me. Now, I would have let that sit for the time that I was making the pate. Or you could actually make them the day before and let them sit in the refrigerator. And what will happen is they will actually start to cook. It's marinating, but they'll have a real nice, soft, cooked taste with the salt and the olive oil. So um, I didn't do those, but I do have one over here that we've done. So we have one that's been sitting for a while. And we'll take a little of our pate. Look at how beautiful that is. I'm just going to taste it for you and let you know. Oh, it's delicious. Um, I like to take a little grape tomato and put on top. And how beautiful is that for an appetizer? And wait, the magic of TV. I made a plate of them for you. Now, wouldn't you be proud to serve that at any party? And I guarantee you, nobody's going to care if you use the word raw food, vegan. It's just good, delicious food. Mm -hmm.